Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Miranveer Singh, an emergency medicine registrar here in the UK. And today's episode, we're going to be going through how to diagnose chest pain in the emergency department. Now, the one thing you got to remember in emergency medicine, we're only interested in the, the most life-threatening emergency or life-affecting diagnosis. And those are the diagnosis that we're going to cover today. So yes, there are many causes of chest pain, but there are other different specialities, other different routes that we can send the patient for, for investigation of those other causes. But in the emergency department, there are specific conditions that we're interested in, in ruling out in order to keep you safe at home. So when a patient walks into the emergency department, one of the things is that they always tend to say is, I've got chest pain. As an emergency medicine specialist, one of the things that we have to think about are the various different conditions and causes and pathologies that could be causing chest pain. And these can vary massively from the most serious life-threatening conditions to a muscle injury or nothing. And it's our job to think on our feet and to react accurately in order to get the correct diagnosis in order to keep patients safe. So how do we go about doing that? The easiest way for us is to break down things in terms of organ classification, is to look at the heart, the lungs, the mediastinum, and then extra thoracic. So the most important conditions that we need to consider, which are coming from the heart known as cardiac, are myocardial infarction, so heart attack, aneurysms, the dilatation of the, either the coronary vessels or the main blood vessel that comes from the heart known as the aorta, a dissection, which is tearing of the layers of the blood vessels of the aorta, myocarditis, an infection, inflammation to do with the heart muscle itself, or different arrhythmias where the heart can go very fast, very slow, or conduction defects pericarditis or pericardial effusion, inflammation or infection to do with the sheath and the space which is around the heart, the sac of the heart. And also then conditions such as tumors. And then you look at the lungs, so the pulmonary system. And there you've got the diagnosis that you need to consider are pulmonary embolism, clots in the lungs, pneumothorax, which is air trapping between the lung and the chest wall, hemothorax, which is blood between the lung and the chest wall. Pneumonia, so this is chest infection, and chest infection can arise from a variety of different pathogens which range from viruses, bacteria, fungal infections, you name it. Flail chest which can occur from trauma which can cause the other previous diagnosis of pneumothorax and hemothorax. So flail chest is where you have broken ribs in two different parts over different ribs which cause the segment to move independently compared to the rest of the chest. So this is an emergency situation. Again tumors we have to consider to do with the lungs. In the mediastinum, you've got diagnosis such as esophageal rupture, so Boerhaave's disease, and then you've got tumors that can arise in the mediastinum, and also the aorta, as it's a mediastinal structure, you've still got to consider your aneurysms and dissections. Tumors can also arise from the mediastinal structures, as well as the lymph tissue as well. So sometimes you may discover in a patient on chest x-rays, medial spinal masses, and that turns out to be the initial way how a diagnosis is made for the lymphoma for the first time in someone, incidentally on a chest x-ray. And then you've got to remember your extra thoracic conditions that you might need to consider for potential diagnosis that could lead this patient to attend with chest pain. And these are conditions such as pancreatitis, pancreatic pseudocysts, gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers, hepatitis, cholecystitis, ascending cholangitis, abdominal aneurysms, abdominal dissection, hepatic abscesses, splenic infarction, perforation, shingles, ectopic pregnancies, trauma, and then tumors such as pancreatic tumors, cholangiocarcinomas, you name it. So there are a ton of conditions that we consider as emergency medicine specialists when a patient comes in with chest pain, but there's ways to filter these out and that's through taking a thorough detailed history, followed by a detailed examination, followed by relevant investigations, and then instituting the correct management plan. So mainly through the history taking, you'll get 80, 85% of the diagnosis most of the time. Then you use your examination to refine your diagnoses and then potentially you may use bedside investigations such as portable chest x-ray, urine analysis to look at pregnancy test, ECGs so your heart trace will give you a diagnosis to do with certain heart and lung conditions. 
bedside ultrasonography is a very useful technology that we have to hand nowadays and you can make diagnosis to do with valvular pathology, cardiac pathologies, lung pathologies, picking up pneumonias, pneumothoraxes, pleural effusions, pericardial effusions, pulmonary edema, free fluid in the abdomen, trauma around the kidneys and the liver. So many different pathologies and diagnoses you can make with bedside ultrasonography. It's absolutely amazing. And another bedside test is you have the arterial blood gas or the venous blood gas depending on your patient which can help you fine tune to certain conditions. So for example an arterial blood gas will be able to tell you whether it's a metabolic alkalotic problem but also will be able to help you for certain respiratory problems. And then you've got your confirmatory tests which are going to be your formal laboratory blood tests and the most important of those blood tests are going to be things like your HB, whether you're anemic or not, whether you're bleeding or not, your white cell count and your CRP, which are going to tell you about infective and inflammatory pathologies, your amylase and LFTs used in combination with each other to tell you about liver and pancreatic pathologies, and then you also have something called a troponin and a D-dimer, which can help engage you with certain conditions to do with the heart, like heart attack and D-dimers that we use for things like clots, clots in the lungs known as pulmonary embolism. And then when you've got certain diagnosis, then you might even want confirmatory scans. And there's so many different types of scans that one can do. Mainly in the emergency department with patients presenting with chest pain we tend to go for a certain type of a CT scan and they come in the form of the following. Either a CTPA which is to do with the lungs scanning for clots. Then you also have a CTA which is a CTA autogram which is a specific CT scan done to look at the aorta to look for things like aneurysms and dissection. And then the final one is a CT contrast scan to do with the chest and the abdomen and that looks at certain other pathologies to look at organ damage, internal bleeding, finding causes for infection, bowel perforation and so many other conditions that we would be considering. Then you have your treatment and your treatment depends on the cause that you found through your history, examination, investigations and your treatments can range from everything from a chest drain for your pneumothorax or hemothorax to pericardiocentesis for your pericardial effusion to giving medication for medical management of heart attacks, clots in the lungs known as pulmonary embolisms PEs, sending the patient to the cath lab so they can have stents inserted for patients having specific types of heart attacks or potentially even sending a patient for operative management. So some patients might need a cardiothoracic surgeon to get involved if they're having a dissection to do with the thoracic aorta. You might even need a general surgeon in cases to do with the aorta within the abdomen or you might even need the general surgeon for abdominal pathology that was causing the chest pain or if it was an ectopic pregnancy that was causing the chest pain due to rupture then you would 100% need the gynecology team and their specialists involved very early on. So in the emergency department not only would we be giving the medical management, stabilizing the patient, resuscitating the patient, then we'd be getting these other different teams involved for definitive management. So it's so crucial for us as seniors in the emergency department to make the correct diagnosis in a timely fashion so that we not only make the right diagnosis to keep the patient safe, but then we also get the correct teams involved to get the definitive management to get the best end result. We've covered a lot of different things in this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful. There'll be more episodes coming up. Have a look for other different topics and things that I've covered. Covered, for example, the day in the life of a doctor, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode.